Hi guys, Josh here, welcome to France First Second. Today we're here with Nick and Luke, and we're going to be shooting some large format. My name's Nick Bedford and I'm a photographer from Brisbane. I shoot a lot of film now, actually quite a lot and not much digital anymore. Today I'm Luke Henry, I'm a camera enthusiast from Brisbane and yeah, I'm excited to come today and do some large format sheet film. So this is the Intrepid 4x5 Mark III and then this is the Nikon 135mm. Zero, um, it, it's about a 35 to 40 mil, which is my favorite focal length. You don't need this for everything, um, but the minimum you need is a incident meter to get a good reading, spot meter if you're doing slide film especially, upside down and back to front, and then it's also really dark as well. Yeah. This is f5.6, um, which is equivalent to 1.4. The photos are this big by default. So. I think it'll be amazing to see um, some slide film. Yeah, it's much older, it's the old speed graphic. I got a silver pet spool lens in it. It has two, two shutters in it. So it has one in the actual camera and then this pet spool lens doesn't have a shutter, but if I was to use the standard graphic lens, it has just like a normal shutter that you can get on. Over here is your little sheet. So you've got tension springs in there. So you crank it up, and then you've got um, A, which is like these ones. So on A, I can get 10th of a second, 15th, 20th, up to 40th, and then go to B, and then I've got those shutter speeds, 70 to 150, and then C, 200 to 400, and you can get right up to D. Gets a bit tighter as you wind it. Gets up to 1,000th of a second. You've also got this wheel down here that you can't, can't forget because that actually selects your sh shutter speed. So I'm on D and I need, because this Petsful lens is about f3.5 at about a thousandth, so I need to be on six, six, D, one thousandth of a second. And then to shoot, I just go, whoop, and that's it. A lot of these um, cameras used to come, oh, they have a plate that can go on top that actually has a range finder. So if you want, you can, um, Treat it just like an SLR sort of thing. It's pretty cool, like awesome New York photographer Wiggy used to yeah, use it. Use, that was the reason I bought one, because I just thought that guy's such a badass climbing in the back of police cars and stuff. Yeah. To focus on this, it's a bit, you can use this, yeah. or you can um, set it, pull it out wherever you want, and then this sort of limits how far you can come back. So you can sort of have a range of where you, how, what sort of distance you want to do. So you yeah. set your basic focus on this and then do fine adjustments on the wheels. And you can do a tiny bit of rise and fall, but I don't really use that too often. Yeah. And so what do you have loaded in at the moment? Uh, HP5. Yeah. So I would do this on colour because it looks really beautiful. Yeah, it does have a nice colour to it. <laughs> but I can't develop um, yeah. colour myself. Maybe a place to come back. I can actually tilt the back independently from the front, which also tilts. And you can get, get different effects, like you can change the focal plane, where how the focal plane is oriented. With this scene, I could focus along the building, despite not being flat against the building. One thing I've seen large format photographers do, before they take the shot, they always do a test of the lens. So you stop it down, make sure it works. F45. A 30th of a second. So this is the film holder. Um, it's got a dark slide in there. Lift up the ground glass, slide it in, make sure it's locked into place. <laughs> yeah. Take the cup slide. Yeah. That's it. Always take notes because then you'll have an idea of what you did. Okay. Um, what you've seen. Okay. I just take film, lens, what the lens is at, and sheet number, 
which side it was on. I had these, this one one shot preloaded of Elford FP4. Yeah. And then I've got some Elford Delta 100. Uh, how does it work out? It's quite wide. I can't remember exactly what. 75? With this lens, the character of it is is that the center is super sharp and then the edges blur. So you can see they get a bit of distortion, you can see on the edges. Mm. It sort of swells a bit. So the straight lines should look pretty cool. What do I do with my film? This is the worst part about using the actual shutter in the speed graphic, is that I've got my picture framed up and everything's great, but I've got a put the film in, wind the springs to get it to six. And in that process, I'm bound to bump the camera and mess my framing up a tiny bit. Locked in, nice and tight. Pull my, now I'm ready to shoot. Ready, Nick? One, two, three. So yeah, I guess I was in a hurry and I loaded the film in the back of the car. And I wasn't really paying attention to what I was doing and I put the put, put the, my loaded frames with my empty frames like my empty holders sorry so I picked up the wrong holders <laughs> yeah. and uh, yeah and I even actually shot a frame that had already been shot <laughs> I shot in a, in a shoot with a band called Psychroptic and um, yeah, I uh, shot over the top of that, so Nick's the, now the sixth member of <laughs> Psychropic. <laughs> I reckon just like casually look at, look at the camera. Yeah, like that. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Photographs. Yeah, Polaroid, which is also a large one. Wow, yeah, sort of. It's like just, it's like 4 by 3 uh, so, you know, it's, it's bigger than 120, right? Yeah. It's bigger than 120. Ready? That is a Polaroid FP100C. So Fable. the best, best bit about it is Fable. we get yeah. the you get the positive on that side and, and then negative. This oh side, you get the negative that's right yeah, yeah this side you just chuck a bit of bleach or mold cleaner on and then <laughs> wipes off the black and then you get a negative huh. it's really old this stock yeah that's so cool. it's only expired now right <laughs> but um so yeah you can see the negative just there yeah, yeah. if if you want the negative you to underexpose yeah. just a touch because the negatives come out better the highlights blow out real easy on the negatives it's almost like treat it like slide almost yeah yeah, yeah totally yeah so my positives always look a bit dark but then when i bleach the negatives it's like sick yeah. and they're actually like way sharper than the yeah. positives as well I love that yeah. negative, you can see real well. That is yeah. One, two, three. There you go. Nice. That's yours. Yeah. Okay, so once again, I forgot to record an outro. So I'll leave Luke's and Nick's Instagrams in the description below. So please go check them out. Let me know what you think of the episode. Um, because Luke did kind of mess up, we did kind of get back together and kind of film a bit more stuff because he wanted to redeem himself. So let us know if you want to see that footage. Let Luke know specifically because I don't think he's got it developed yet. So get him to develop it so I can release that footage as well. Please like and subscribe to these post notifications so you know when there's a new episode. But anyway, I'm Josh. This has been Frames Per Second. Just get out there and shoot some film. Uh, <laughs> <laughs>